Hello guys, this video gives you some cool ideas for fast, easy uh, side details, side paneling details. I'll show what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a plane and I'll just uh, make like a quick little panel type thing here. But real quick guys, if you're looking for what I consider to be the best 3D modeling tutorial on the internet, I recommend checking out my Udemy course. It's got tutorials on Blender, 3ds Max, CAD programs such as Plasticity and Moai 3D and a lot of ZBrush as well. So if you want to master a variety of programs to really bring your skills up to the next level and master 3ds Max, Blender, ZBrush, and Plasticity, be sure to check out that course. Link is in the description. Let's continue. So let's see, I've got this little kind of like a little panel thing right here. All right, I'll go ahead and let's say, I'll uh, subdivide this, use some uh, established curvature right here. And I'll go ahead and apply a shell modifier. All right, and I'll just go down here, make sure that straight corners is on. All right, so let's say this is gonna be the outer panel. And to make things look more, you know, realistic and detailed, it's cool to have some sort of like inner, inner panel. So for example, this could be the armor piece on top, and then there could be like some sort of, you know, inner panel, which connects everything together. So in order to get that, I'll just uh, use by angle, select that, and then uh, detach it as a clone. And I'll give this like a, a gray. Since this is kind of like on the interior of our, you know, of our design, our mech, our spaceship or whatever, it's gonna have a nice little gray color here. We're gonna go ahead and shell that. All right, that way we're gonna, we're gonna have this as like the little armor piece on top and this as the little inner detail here. And we can make it look more skeletal we can for example i'll select this in the border level a whole control and click here convert to polygon i'll let's say grow control like just like inverse and i'll delete that for example but not before maybe doing some little cuts right here All right, I'll go ahead and uh, select these. I'll go ahead and uh, let's see here. And delete that, for example. To get rid of those small triangles, you can just do a uh, rod operation with a larger value. And I'll show you what I mean right here. So let's say I've got that and let's say I don't want to spend the time to delete all these. You can just control A weld and increase the weld threshold. And if it's high enough, you will get those triangles here as well. They can just uh, Turn on face constraint, just gonna move it right here. Alright, so this is gonna be like a nice little uh, mesh for us. Uh, in order to get rid of this effect here, I'll go ahead and like all the faces and just do a little, nice little inset right here. And then when we have the rest, we'll get this nice result right here. Alright, that's kind of a, a very fast way of doing this right here. So, now, let me apply it to Turbo Smooth here as well. So let's get some cool little details happening here as well. So, first thing I'll do is maybe just uh, do some slight detailing right here. And to make things look nicer, sometimes it's nice just to kind of uh, push these out a little bit here. 
there's some nice kind of irregularities here i can select this use set flow for example All right so one thing we can do here is that insert you know segments here to establish sharpness here and then i would do two more here and so now what we can do is use cut and we can use cut in this kind of a zigzaggy way I can continue here as well. I right, maybe going out too far. I'm not sure. All right, let me go ahead and maybe make this a little bit shorter here. All right, so the first thing we can do is actually hold down shift and select these pyramids right here all right and i'm going to go ahead and inset this right here now I'll go and select these Actually, before I do that, go backwards here. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and save the selection here. So I'll go ahead and actually I'll go here into selection. And then for stored selections, I'll go ahead and store number one. So that way I can just select this. And clicking on store one to get it back and click right here on paste store one, which will give me back my selection. All right. So I can go ahead and select these as well. small little inset there as well and we can go ahead and store that right here so we can get back the original one and then the second one so the reason why we did that is because now we can combine them together by going here into stored sections and then add one plus two and now we got both of this all right what i'm going to do here is bevel all of it and i'm going to go ahead and instead of doing a further inset which is going to give us maybe something like this we're going to go ahead and scale that making sure that we're using this value right here use good point center it's all going to scale it individually whereas if you use a different one for example this one it's going to scale uh, like so which we don't really want in this case so we're going to get this nice result right here and we can go ahead and hold down shift and scale it again and so what this is going to give us guys is this very nice pattern happening right here so that gives us a very nice impressive result very quickly all right that's one option right there let's go ahead and clone that out Another thing is, of course, you know, just selecting parts right here and just doing the good old extrude and inset operation. Do a little bit of inset here, a little bit of extrude. And that, of course, gives us this kind of a look. Or if we sharpen it up more, and use creases as well so in, in order to avoid this kind of pinching you would simply just have more density here so what you would do is before doing this you would go ahead and use turbo smooth with let's say the within groups option and so now when you apply it and apply it on top you have a lot more density to work with now
and that's going to give you much better results with a lot less pinching or bad results. So you can see, because of this, we have some nice sharpness right here. We're maintaining the sharpness here while having smoothness right there, which gives us a very nice pleasing result. We can further accentuate that by having set flow here, which gives us even more smoothness right here. Alright, if it's a little bit lumpy here, instead of using set flow, in this case we can just use uh, edge constraints when we kind of move it left and right here. Now after doing that, we can uh, further add little details here. And just to increase the complexity that way. We can have little uh, details like so. Now we've got that going on. That could be going around the whole mesh as well. All right, well, let's say you want to quickly do this. So I'll go ahead and copy this out. The way to do it quickly So, first thing I'll do is I'll use by angle to select this, and I will just detach that. For a certain mesh right here. Now I'll select this right here, and I'll go into modeling and I'll use the dot ring function. And by default, it's using this value right here, dot gap, which means it's going to go ahead and skip one, select the next one, skip one, select the next one, which means if I select this and then do dot ring, or I should say dot loop in this case. It's going to give us this. Now I'm going to go ahead and ring that, pull control and convert the polygon. Now I'm going to go ahead and ring that, pull control and click here to convert to polygon. Now I've got this. I can uh, mass bevel this I, at this point. See, if, if, if it was attached, it would be ringing, you know, all throughout here. And then, you know, right here, for example, if we try to ring this, convert to polygon, it will select all this. So it's a very good idea to just temporarily detach objects right here. Now we're going to go ahead and reattach them. We're going to go ahead and weld the vertices. And now we've got all of this right here. All right. 